Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host. Before there was the PS4 or the Xbox One, there was the Wii U, the console that marked the birth of the eighth generation of console gaming. Welcome back to our fresh, marvellous channel, folks, where we delve deep into the world of gaming across all sorts of hardware, while also paying our respect to the heritage of the gaming community by bringing you the very best. It's no secret that the 8th generation's firstborn could have used more attention on various fronts, but as a modern HD gaming console, this one still packed a great deal of fun to be had. This compelling and affordable game system was the choice to go with while picking up Christmas presents along with an outstanding lineup of games. So, for today's video, we're going to go through 50 enduring and innovative gems that define the dawn of the new era for game consoles. Let's jump right in. Super Mario 3D World How do I start with this one? Uh, Hmm. Let's put it like this. In December 2013, the New York Times dubbed Super Mario 3D World as the game that could single-handedly make the Wii U worth your money. The writer even called it the best Mario game in years. When Mario, Luigi, Toad and Peach are enjoying some fireworks, they encounter a Sprixy princess. She tells them that Browser has kidnapped the other six princesses, only to get herself kidnapped in front of Mario and the gang a moment later. The group pursues Bowser down the pipe, only to end up in the Sprixy kingdom. Here begins your quest to save the princesses before returning home to the Mushroom Kingdom. Much like Super Mario 3D Land and the franchise's other 3D titles, this one lets you roam around freely as you control one of your heroes with their 2D side-scroller mechanics. From retaining everything there is to love in the Mario universe to innovating even in the tiniest details in its levels, there are loads of qualities that take it to the top. Moreover, it's commendable how they gave all playable characters their own attributes. I love it when Mario games do that. I was also constantly swept off my feet by how the whole thing packs this youthful energy. They took some bold but worthwhile risks with designing this one's levels, and I don't think I can think of anything to ask for that Super Mario 3D World doesn't already give me. Wii Sports Club Featuring the five original sports from the original Wii Sports, remastered and reworked with more intricate mechanics, Bandai Namco and Nintendo's Wii Sports Club marks the third game of the series. Thanks to the gamepad, the Wii Sports experience was as sharp as ever and was intended to flex the Wii Motion Plus's tech. It not only lets you enjoy baseball, tennis, boxing, golf and bowling, but it also integrates the Miiverse into play. This one goes a long way in creating a sense of community, and it was having some seamless multiplayer fun right off the bat. It came with these enhanced motion controls that allow for more accurate performance on your end. The 2006 original, in all its glory, doesn't hold a candle to the flame that this game sparks. And I'm not just talking about enhanced controls, but a newfound depth and precision to the sporting experience. The graphics, too, are a significant improvement over 2009's Wii Sports Resort. Since the online mode was highly demanded by fans, the developers made sure everything was just right from the get-go, especially for the sports that focused on real-time gameplay. Disney Infinity 3.0 Our next ultra-fun-to-play title is Disney's very own Toys to Life adventure, Infinity 3.0. It plays like a sequel to Infinity 2.0 from 2014, and while the previous one gave the Marvel heroes more time under the sun, this one has more playset storylines based on the Star Wars franchise. While a good number of people, including myself, have their own reservations about Toys to Life titles, I found this one to be surprisingly creative. Twilight of the Republic, Rise Against the Empire, and The Force Awakens are Star Wars playsets. Inside Out follows Riley in Imagination Land, and Marvel Battlegrounds pitch your comic favourites against Loki and Ultron. Finding Dory has the forgetful titular fish along with Nemo, Marlin, Bailey, Destiny and Hank rescuing tiny fish that have fallen into the wrong tanks. Whereas Toybox Takeover stars Mickey and friends battling Syndrome and more for control of the Toybox. Lastly, Toybox Speedway is a battle race that resembles Mario Kart and the Cars playset from the original Infinity and lets you race with any playable character in the game. The combat mechanics have seen major upgrades in comparison to previous games and while many of the key aspects are retained here, the addition of new weapons, full-blown combo systems and special attacks, along with smaller modifications here and there, make Infinity 3.0 an absolute blast. My favourite has to be the Toy Box mode, which allows you to create freely, mixing and matching all that you've unlocked through the game's various playsets. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U Super Smash Bros. is a heavy title. It carries with it over three decades of gaming history and manages to fit it all into its very easy-going brawler format. This big-time crossover platform fighter came with an impressive roster of 58, coming from various first- and third-party franchises. Within its gameplay, you use the same buttons to perform attacks and moves for different characters. Each of these guys has their own combat style and moves. Now, as much as I love badass fighters like Mortal Kombat or Tekken, I do find a lot of comfort in simpler fighters like this one. What's more, if you call a newbie over to play, you won't be as unevenly matched with them as an experienced player because the controls remain the same. Once you get the hang of the thing, you realise how challenging it actually is to master. If you're a human who enjoys gaming, even in the broadest sense, you're sure to find something you recognise or love here. Super Smash Bros, and this is the biggest reason to love it if you ask me, acts a world of references and easter eggs for you to get nostalgic over during its stellar moment-to-moment -moment fighting. 
Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze With gameplay improved significantly over its prequel, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is a Wii U platformer brought to us by Retro Studios and Nintendo. You play as Donkey Kong, and the second player is free to take control of your companion, Kong. When invaders from the Arctic, the Snowmads, disrupt Donkey Kong's birthday celebrations with ice dragons and icy winds, the titular ape and family must clear five different islands to restore peace and stop the ruckus. With some brilliant level design, challenging levels and chaotic gameplay like no other, this master the piece of mechanics even comes with an amazing soundtrack. The presentation and graphics take full advantage of the Wii U's performance abilities and happen to be a major step up from the previous game. Overall, I think you'll find this short and sweet adventure, especially the boss fights, to be a thrilling experience. A publication even chose it as Game of the Year when it came out in 2014. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild This next marvellous action adventure is set at the very end of the Zelda timeline and has the players taking control of an amnesiac Link to save the world and Princess Zelda from Calamity Ganon. Hyrule makes for an exciting open world to explore and lets you advance in whichever direction you see fit. Link is a skillful knight who wields the Master Sword, which seals the darkness. He's been appointed to protect Zelda with his life and assist her as they face Ganon. In Hyrule, you roam around playing the story in a non-linear manner, gathering items and undertaking side quests or solving puzzles. Metacritic Critic folks have gone far in declaring this one a Game of the Year masterpiece that broke records for the number of positive reviews it got. The whole thing screams bold and sucks you into its mysterious and compelling atmosphere. It borrows a little in terms of game mechanics or designs, but churns out an entirely unique product. I'm still amazed by how much it resembled a Zelda game while doing something so unique within the sandbox world. It made me enjoy getting lost in the world, and with most of the tools given to me in the intro, it was quite satisfying to know that I could approach quests as I saw fit. Pikmin 3 Nintendo's real-time strategy and puzzle game, Pikmin 3, is the sequel to the previous two games on the GameCube. The solo campaign lets you play as up to three alien captains, Alf, Brittany and Charlie, to command Pikmin forces in exploring a planet PNF. 404 to save your home, Kopai, from famine. The goal is to obtain cultivable seeds to grow fruits with. Outside of commanding a hundred of the silly plant types that are the Pikmin, you make use of the Pikmin's unique abilities to clear enemies, obstacles and puzzles before gathering treasure. You direct the Pikmins on what to do and can have them build a bridge, destroy barriers, take down enemies or even gather loot. Each of the little fellas has their own colors and character quirks, like strength or immunity to certain stimuli. It managed to invoke in me this sense of urgency a feeling that was only enriched by the responsiveness of its controls. With some solid levels enhanced by the Wii U's HD graphics and thoroughly detailed environments, everything about Pikmin 3 screams well-crafted. They even updated it to make use of the platform's touchscreen feature. Rayman Legends This fifth installment of the Rayman franchise games was a sequel to Rayman Origins from 2011 and took its predecessor's hub world gameplay style to depict events that take place a century after that game. After fighting the Dark Toons and other evil creatures in the Glade of Dreams in Origins, Rayman, the Teensies and Globox fell into a deep slumber and all was at peace. Unfortunately, this period of calm is short-lived and a new character, Barbara the Barbarian Princess, along with her sister and cousins, is abducted by the Bubble Dreamer. Murphy sounds Rayman and the others and gets them to wake up, setting off to rescue the princess. Let me just express my gratitude to the developers for this one. My satisfaction knew no bounds when I realized that Legends had players all powered up and ready to go, right off the bat. Add the improvements and various tweaks that it makes to Origins, and you have on your hands a worthy top 10 Wii U contender. Since it adopts Origins' story-driven gameplay style, you roam around gathering lums by clearing enemies, liberating captured teensies, or simply picking said lums up. You can also play as Globox, the teensies, and Barbara. The Wii U gamepad even allows players Player 2 to control Murphy with its touch controls. This one's undoubtedly a vivid, inviting adventure that wowed me with regards to its presentation and chaotic gameplay. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker Following the success of Super Mario 3D World, Nintendo acknowledged how enticing Captain Toad's levels were and decided to give the chap his own spin-off game. With dioramic environments and puzzle solving across its platform and gameplay, this one places you in the shoes of the captain himself and occasionally his adventurous partner Toadette as you clear levels to reach the star at the end. You also play to save either of the two from the game's antagonist crow, Wingo. You don't have to be a genius to figure out that Toad sells like crazy because he represents the cutest parts of the Mario universe. To properly capitalize on his adorableness, Nintendo loaded this one with impressive visuals to complement the character design. With keen attention to detail, Treasure Tracker feels like a well-told story, at least as far as platforming games go, even in spite of portraying a simple setting to justify its gameplay. As if it weren't already great enough, it also happens to be one of those titles that inevitably makes use of the gamepad. It's a great example of what we've all known. Nintendo excels at taking an idea that shows potential and blowing it out of the water by delivering a worthy expansion of said idea with a whole lot of charm. 
Nintendo Land, with an impressive 12 mini-games that are all based on popular Nintendo franchises like The Legend of Zelda, Mario, Pikmin, Metroid, and many more, Nintendo Land was designed to present itself as a collection of different attractions in an amusement park. Right off the bat, you find yourself in this hub area for all the attractions, and a robotic park guide shows you around and accompanies you through the tutorial. The main purpose of Nintendo Land was to showcase the gamepad and Wii U's other new features. Think of this one as what Wii Sports was to the Wii Remote, and Wii. My favorite mini-games here have to be the ones that make use of the Wii's nunchuck and remote plus controllers to allow you to play in different ways. Among these, I personally recommend Metroid Blast and Pikmin Adventure, simply because of how immersive they were to play. The asymmetrical style of play that's made available here is quite important if you remember that the goal was to showcase the console's capabilities. The whole thing feels like an upbeat getaway, and with the HD graphics, Nintendo Land screams polished. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker I'll say this, the Wii U has no shortage of creative titles that feature their own unique designs and gameplay styles. Following Link once again, The Wind Waker places you in a race to seize control of the wish-granting Triforce. By your side is the King of the Red Lions, your sentient boat, and the Princess Zelda incarnate Tetra as a pirate captain. This story falls chronologically after the Adult Link timeline, following which the series Hero of Time has defeated Ganon and time traveled back to his childhood. However, the boat starts to rock when Ganon resurfaces and captures Link's sister. While it adopts a 3D action-adventure gameplay similar to Majora's Mask and the Ocarina of Time, this one ditches the realistic graphics from those games to give you an interesting new, cell-shading-based art style that gives the game a whimsical, cartoonish touch. This distinct style was received with some mixed feelings, but once I got used to it, I realized that the animation quality here was unrivaled. Your characters don't shy away from expressing themselves and make the story compelling within its finely detailed, alive environments. Hyrule Warriors. Our next game takes after Dynasty Warriors with its hack and slash gameplay and applies these mechanics to the Legend of Zelda franchise's settings. With Ganondorf pushing for resurrection by manipulating Seer, the keeper of the Triforce's balance, Princess Zelda can send something sinister in the air. She seeks out the hero's reborn spirit, only to find Link in her own castle's training grounds. Before they get a chance to talk, Hyrule Castle is attacked by hordes of monsters. In addition to Link, this one also has you control a good number of other characters across its different quests. It emphasizes the fighting, and this context-based combat system keeps the game interesting by altering your abilities based on your chosen current character and their weapons. While it isn't technically a Legend of Zelda game, it still manages to give the fans what they crave with its references while being set within the same universe. I love this one simply because it refuses to get old while dutifully serving the fans. Sonic Lost World. With fresh parkour moves and levels that let you approach them through alternate paths, the super-fast hedgehog returned in Sonic Lost World. The plot for this hedgehog series installment sees Sonic rushing to defeat the Deadly Six. This alien race aims to use the evil Dr. Eggman's machine at the Lost Hex to harness the world's energy and become more powerful. If you've played the Sonic games that came before this one, you'll find it to be a refreshing change of taste. For one, Lost World pits you against a new big bad while taking a light-hearted approach to storytelling. While Eggman normally plays the enemy, this one also makes him an ally at one point. Hmm. There's a bit of a learning curve to the controls on this one, which goes to give gamers a solid challenge. And once you overcome this curve, you're sure to find the modernized environment traversing an extremely frenetic, enjoyable experience. Zombie You. This next one's a first-person survival horror with a permadeath system. The plot here, outside of the zombie apocalypse at hand, tells the story of how a scientist predicted said 2012 apocalypse some 400 years ago. As a result of the prophecy, certain individuals and groups started preparing for what was to come. After the outbreak, your player character finds himself at one such prepper's bunker, now equipped with the right tools and weapons to increase his chances of survival. If you die as one survivor, you simply take control of another. The previous one, however, will turn into a zombie that you'll need to kill to regain your inventory loot. The gameplay will have you carrying out tasks for the prepper to maintain his bunker, while also trying to seek out a cure. With several kinds of zombies to overcome, this game even went the extra mile to make your flesh eaters just a little smart. The zombies are sensitive to light and sound, a quality that you might not hope for while playing, but can't help but applaud. So, you might want to tiptoe around those corners here and avoid the undead and intimidating. Permadeath makes this one perma-scary, and in raw survival horror fashion, you're at risk as you use the gamepad to manage your inventory. Need for Speed Most Wanted You This one enabled the arcade racers to step up the game and compete online in an expansive and seamless cross-platform inspired format. There's always a little confusion with the Most Wanted titles, so allow me to clear that up real quick. Now, the original Most Wanted was released in 2005 and developed by EA. This original came with the career mode story 
that had you take on 15 rivals from the blacklist. The Wii U version was based on a different game developed by Criterion, taking on the original's intellectual property. This version doesn't have a story and is set in Fairhaven City as opposed to the original's Rockport City, but you'll still find your circuit, speed run, and sprint races here. Additionally, you take on a most wanted list of 10 and not 15. Also, keep an eye out for the hidden Mario vehicles. The Wii U port faithfully follows the Criterion original while making the game look better and run smoother on the console's 1GB of RAM. This was the first time a third-party title came with full Miiverse integration. I love the most wanted games. My first one was the original's Black Edition on PS2, and while I missed the cool story, the co-driver mode and how it allowed Player 2 to provide on-road assistance by making adjustments and keeping an eye on the interactive gamepad map made me forget all about it. Super Mario Maker Nintendo Super Mario Maker is an incredibly user-friendly side-scrolling platformer that also serves as a comprehensive toolbox that allows you to create your own platform levels. It takes on the style of the Super Mario series, as is evident from its visual art and gameplay styles, and even lets you publish your creative levels for the community to enjoy. The amount of creative freedom it offers you is insane. Feel like stacking Goombas in a tower? Using them as a staircase. Goomba pipes? <laughs> you got it. Super Mario Maker gives you space to go crazy and even merge different game styles. The thing is, level design even in this game is not exactly an easy task, but this one makes it pretty easy to learn, and you're going to have a lot of fun with this flexible toolbox. I can attest to its accessibility and the creativity on offer because, yes, I too have made a level or two of my own. And no, they'll never see the light of day. <laughs> I believe the world is just not ready for the way, I think. Yoshi's Woolly World Starring Bowser's infant self, Baby Bowser as its antagonist, Yoshi's Woolly World is a 2015 platformer that became the seventh game of the Yoshi series. Within its knitted world, populated by innumerable unique yarn Yoshis, the evil Magic Cooper and Bowser's adoptive father, Kamek, turn most of the island's Yoshis into balls of yarn for Baby Bowser. However, two Yoshis manage to save themselves from the transformation and must now go after Kamek to save their friends. Is it just me, or does Woolen Yoshi look extremely determined? You'll find most moves and mechanics from the Yoshi's Island series here, complete with tongue attacks and flutter jumps. To switch things up a little, as you swallow enemies to clear levels, Yoshi drops balls that you can throw to tie up enemies or bridge gaps in the level. I'd say Woolly World is quite forgiving towards newcomers. The initial levels let you get the hang of its mechanics and have you slinging yarn in no time. I enjoyed how fresh the art style felt while bringing familiar characters to the screen. Pokken Tournament Does the name Pokken Tournament sound familiar to you? Probably because it is. This one blends the titles and gameplay of the Tekken series with the Pokemon franchise. And let me just say, it blends them fantastically. The action-packed arena fights unless you fight as a Pokemon, using intuitive combos and intricate combat mechanics in a Tekken fashion. You can even call other Pokemon to assist you. While Tekken gets a little technical with its play, this one is about pure combat while bringing 16 of your favorite Pokemon with their techniques, special attacks, and gauge-depleting mega evolutions to the fight. Interestingly enough, before the first blows dealt, you play in the game's field phase, where you can move around freely. After that first hit, you switch to the duel phase, where both opponents move around relatively. If you stop to think about it from a competitive perspective, the mere existence of the original field phase creates a lot of room for strategizing, and you can get a game-changing head start before the dueling begins. Within a year of its release, this not only managed to outsell Street Fighter V, but was also credited for an increase in Wii U hardware sales during its debut week. It's great to look at, thoroughly designed, and felt consistently rewarding throughout the time I played it. Additionally, while some complain about the limited roster, as a gamer who prefers mastering as many characters as possible, I was very relaxed in getting acquainted with the 16 Pokemon featured here. Mario Kart 8 With new circuit designs to race in and cutting-edge anti-gravity karts to drive upside down on the ceiling, Mario Kart 8 inherited the Mario Kart series DNA. You race your karts as characters from the Mario universe around various Super Mario-themed environments, grabbing power-ups to gain an advantage. Of course, you're also free to give your opponents a boost or sabotage their karts during the races. You'll find the series' most appreciated features like 12-player online races, underwater racing, gliders, and motorcycles reprising their roles in this one. Needless to say, Mario Kart is a big name in the world of racing, and this one in particular makes for the most vibrant installment in the series. Mario Kart 8 was even declared the best-selling Wii U game of all time. And to justify this, we have not only its magical gameplay, but also its graphics, especially attributable to some excellent detail work on its environments. If you still need convincing, it even comes with an upbeat and catchy soundtrack. 
Splatoon. The next game that managed to make it to our marvellous Wii U charts is Splatoon, a third-person shooter starring the Inklings. These humanoid cephalopod lifeforms possess the ability to switch between their human and cephalopod shapes. In their humane form, they can produce and shoot ink, while the other form lets them blend in with their surroundings as long as the surface they hide on is of the same colour as their ink. Hmm, this one primarily focuses on online team-based matches, but for those who seek a story, it offers that too. The story has you recruited by a war veteran for a rescue mission to prevent another disastrous war. If you know a fair amount about games, you know that Nintendo doesn't really dabble in shooters, yet it did this time, and the result was surprisingly good. The premise of the game makes room for its innovative gameplay and delivers a refreshing shooter. With the new maps and game modes that were added in updates, this already well-presented title becomes a top 50 candidate for the Wii U. Bayonetta 2 Returning to the screen with a new hairstyle and outfit, Bayonetta is first seen shopping when some angels attack the city. The titular hero promptly jumps into the action with Jean, a fellow witch and ally, only for her bestie soul to get sucked into hell when things go sideways. Here begins the titular witch's quest to find the gates of hell and rescue her friend. Bayonetta 2 features action similar to that in the prequel and has you fight both angels and demons using your melee weapons and guns. This is one of those games that's frequently described as a masterclass in combat design. The accessibility and depth of its gameplay are perfectly balanced, and this fine hack-and-slash action adventure even excels at giving you a variety of playstyles to adopt as you're thrown into its chaotic madness. Moreover, the graphics are a significant upgrade over its prequels. As you conquer the chaos, players who have played the prequel will feel like they're playing an entirely different, far more stylish and fun game. At least I did. Xenoblade Chronicles X With a world five times larger than its predecessors, Xenoblade Chronicles X delivered on all that it had promised before the launch. Not only does its astonishing world compel you to wonder, but this action RPG actually lets you enjoy its impressively lengthy, quality gameplay. The plot here follows the survivors of an alien war after they barely escape with their lives, and seeing their home planet, the Earth, blown to bits. As newcomers to the world of Myra, you start off creating your own character, an intricate affair, before you embark on a journey to uncover the planet's secrets. You play as part of this blade unit, within which you can pick your character class to defend the remaining survivors. Playing it felt like I was eating a hearty meal. The world does not let up on giving you reasons to explore, and the battle system packs a punch. And Myra isn't just big, it's alive, too. So, it's almost guaranteed that you'll have a blast playing as a survivor. Shovel Knight Yacht Club's Shovel Knight is up next and takes the form of a thoughtful NES-inspired platformer. The main story, Shovel of Hope, starts off with your popular duo, the titular hero and his partner, Shield Knight, discovering a cursed amulet at the Tower of Fate. The amulet curses Shield Knight and when Shovel Knight comes, he finds the tower sealed and his partner gone. He'd taken to a life of solitude when a powerful enchantress made a play for the land. She's backed by the Order of No Quarter, a bunch of evil knights. With the start of her reign, the Tower of Fate is unsealed and here begins your your journey to save Shield Knight. While it retains the characteristics of a retro-inspired title with its glorious pixel art, challenging difficulty levels and a seen-before idea being made into an unseen product, this one is no rip-off. The style and enemies draw inspirations from the Mega Man series. The world depicted is a charming and vibrant one, and I have to say, if a game manages to invoke a sense of nostalgia in me while being an entirely fresh experience and giving me multiple storylines to play, you best believe it'll end up on my list of favourites. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate Our next title marked another one of Capcom's attempts to get the West talking about the Monster Hunter franchise. Essentially, this one is an expanded, revamped and re-released version of Monster Hunter Tri, which was released for the Wii. Not only does the Wii U version let you battle underwater again, but you can also use the bow, dual swords, gun lance and hunting horn underwater this time. The G rank, which denotes a level higher than high rank, unseen since Freedom Unite, makes a comeback too. This rank features better equipment and more difficult monsters through its fresh set of quests, giving us what Try was missing. But don't let this fool you. The Wii U version is still great if you're looking to get into the Monster Hunter series. The single player mode here also has a reputation for easing you into the game's intricate battle systems. This is the kind of game that consumes you in every positive sense of the word. It emphasizes battle prep, player skill, and grinding. What stands out most here is that while you're free to skim through, you'll be met with daunting difficulty levels if you do. If you play this immersive title the way it's meant to be played, you'll find it to be a sweet and rewarding experience. Badland GOTY Edition Living in what used to once be a beautiful forest habitat, the clones are these little hairy black creatures trying to adapt to some unpleasant changes. You control one of these creatures as they try to navigate through their home environment. The unpleasant changes I mentioned refer to their world gradually being taken over by bizarre machines that make their surroundings uninhabitable. 
but the clones are relentless creatures. They overcome these environmental hazards by altering their speed and size, and even increasing their numbers. As you flap through this one's four stages and their respective levels, you pick up these collectibles that allow you to change your clone's form or alter your pace. The levels only get harder, and by the time you hit that level you get stuck on, you're addicted to its flappy bird-like gameplay. It was initially released as a mobile game that was later released for consoles as the Games of the Year edition. I found it to be a positively chaotic experience, especially because of how you can even die if you don't keep up with the level side-scrolling in spite of navigating the traps well. Minecraft Wii U Edition For the residents of Under a Rockville, here's the gist of the cultural icon of a sandbox that is Minecraft. With primarily the creative and survival modes to play in this boxy, pixelated world, Minecraft puts you in control of a default skin character, Steve. Creative mode allows you to fly around and build structures with infinite resources at your disposal. There are no enemies or challenges here, just you and the world you set out to create. Survival mode, on the other hand, gives you an in-depth adventure with different difficulty levels. It puts you in the wild with a health and hunger gauge, and you must gather resources and build to survive the nights, which is when the monsters attack. While I was disappointed over how I couldn't manage my inventory using the gamepad, at the cost of a genius game like Minecraft, this is no deal breaker for me. Besides, the controls still remain fairly intuitive, and it features an interesting split-screen co-op mode, which I found to really enhance the gameplay. Affordable Space Adventures With its story bringing an interesting mix of comedy, mystery and fear to the table, Affordable Space Adventures revolves around a space travel company, You Explore, which promises customers cheap space exploration in their company-provided spaceships. The folks at You Explore have even gone and found a planet titled Spectaculon for you to explore. You play one of the customers, and as fate would have it, for some undepicted reason, you wake up to your mothership, shipwrecked in a hostile alien world. With no other option and your own small craft spaceship in bad condition, you set out to find a distress beacon to request emergency extraction from the company. This one had me solving some excellently designed, engaging puzzles in my very own small craft. The controls allow you to maneuver your ship and interact with your environment in limited ways, while keeping an eye on your ship's control panel. I found the coolest part here to be how you can use your gamepad to manage your ship's various systems, especially if you're playing in co-op mode. This mode goes a long way toward giving the affair a very Star Trek feel. I'll go as far as saying this is among the best gamepad and Miiverse integrations I've seen in a game. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Up next, we have Assassin's Creed 4, which sticks to the premise of the series and has the protagonist follow an Abstergo employee who follows the role of a charming pirate by the name of Edward Kenny in the Caribbean area through simulation. As you explore the collection of ancestral memories portrayed here, you live out the Assassin's expeditions in their fight against the authoritarian Templars in 1715. It boasts some great combat and stealth mechanics, most of which enable an open-ended approach to play. This story happens to be among my Assassin's Creed favorites solely because of how well it explores themes like freedom and suppression. Edward Kenny's transformation from pirate to member of the Brotherhood never failed to impress me. The open world at your disposal is treacherous, though seamless, and complements the thrilling naval battle sequences. Hats off to the Wii U for making the game look as good and well detailed as it does, in spite of its size. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD Yet another Zelda title, Twilight Princess, is focused on good old Link as he fights to save the kingdom of Hyrule from a dark force emerging from the depths of the twilight that has taken over the land. Hyrule Castle was invaded, and Princess Zelda was made to surrender control of the kingdom by the usurper, King of Twilight, which is what gave rise to the threat. This dark force is a corrupt alternate reality dubbed the Twilight Realm that threatens to replace Link's reality. Our hero is a mere teenager here and must team up with Midna, an unfamiliar creature to save the world by fighting through labyrinth dungeons and solving trap puzzles. Moreover, it even has him turning into a divine wolf to embrace the darkness and make it a fair fight. As this emotional yet adventurous story made it to the Wii U, the visuals and controls improved greatly, and you'll find some new challenges to complete here. The gamepad allows you to manage your inventory far more efficiently on the go, and even lets you monitor the map. Leaving the obviously genius gamepad integration aside, I also loved how Link's human and wolf forms both came with their own mechanics and unique move sets. They worked wonders to vary my Zeldian experience, and might just become the key reason behind your playing it. Batman Arkham City Armored Edition Arkham City is now transformed into a maximum security playground run by the scum that plagues Gotham City. The story kicks off with a bang, with Bruce Wayne being arrested and being exposed as the man behind the mask by Hugo Strange. After you've broken free, Alfred sends you the Batsuit, and you set out to rescue Catwoman before you start looking into Strange's plans and Protocol 10. We use Arkham City release was called the game's Armored Edition, and depicts the same gripping story and thrilling gameplay but with greatly improved mechanics and more 
more functionality thanks to the Wii U and its gamepad, which becomes your wrist-mounted back computer and even lets you access equipment and evidence. I can't stress it enough. I'm a fan of how the gamepad completely reimagines the way your gadgets work and even lets you upgrade them. The Batarangs and Detective Mode segments are as accurate to play with as they've ever been. Armored Edition even adds a special suit for Batman, as well as Catwoman, and lets you gain kinetic energy to enter a battle armored tech mode, which deals more damage and lets you scan enemies from further distances. As if these things weren't enough, this one also includes all DLCs that came prior to its release. LEGO City Undercover Our next game was nothing short of a risky release when it first came out. While Traveller's Tales had made other LEGO games before, this was the first time making one that wasn't based on a popular comic book or movie character. For a story we've all more or less heard before, it manages to be quite charming and comedic. It stars the witty cop Chase McCain, who returns to LEGO City after a two-year-long exile that he was sent into for a mistake he made during a trial. Chase fights crime alongside rookie cop Frank, and the story sees him return to take down his prison escapee arch-nemesis Rex Fury. To say that Chase is skilled is an understatement. As you hunt down criminals within this game's open world, you gradually unlock new abilities, costumes, and missions, which make the progression feel rewarding. Even though it came out over a decade ago, I still haven't fully come to terms with how awesome this one is. Who would have thought we'd ever receive a LEGO game with an open world that has as much to offer as a GTA title would? The various abilities are handled quite creatively, if you ask me. Hmm. Chase unlocks various disguises that imitate different occupations and personas, and you inherit that particular occupation's skill set. For example, unlocking the astronaut disguise lets you hover around with a jetpack. DuckTales Remastered Bringing back the 1989 NES classic in high definition, DuckTales Remastered takes the form of a Metroidvania platformer presented to the players in 2.5D with 2D hand-drawn characters in 3D levels. After defeating Big Time Beagle and stopping the Beagle Boys from robbing him, Scrooge McDuck discovers that one of his paintings conceals a piece of paper with the locations of five hidden treasures. The rich quadrillionaire wastes no time and makes his way across the world, seeking out all five treasures. You'll find that a solid number of the 1989 game's memorable moments not only live on in this one, but actually feel more balanced. The gameplay remains similar to that of the original. Your most handy weapon is Scrooge's cane, which you can use for movement as well as clearing obstacles. It's a game made rich by its personality and tight controls that also keep players in check by challenging them. By all means of the phrase, DuckTales Remastered is a retro revival done right. New Super Luigi U New Super Mario Bros. U was already a monster, glad to be one of the Wii U's best-selling platformers. When the Year of Luigi came, marking the character's 30th anniversary celebration and an interesting marketing campaign, the folks over at Nintendo thought to themselves, Hey, isn't it weird how DLCs for games are always shorter than the main game? How cool would it be to have a standalone DLC, as large as the base game for a change? The result of that thought was this. The New Super Luigi U was large, essentially the same game in terms of story and mechanics, but with redesigned levels to challenge the gamers more. Additionally, the dude jumps higher than his brother Mario and has reduced ground friction. You had the option to purchase this one as a DLC for New Super Mario Bros. U, as a bundle with that game, or even as a standalone game. My favourite thing when it comes to this celebrity title is how the developers added at least one Luigi Easter egg or landmark per level. This is easily among the most difficult Mario games ever made, and definitely the most difficult Luigi game ever made. They even made the level shorter, though more challenging, to retain their replay value for those who had already played the Mario game. Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition Drinkbox's Metroidvania action platformer Guacamelee was first released for the PS3 and the Vita before it was enhanced and released for the Wii U and more, titled as the game's Super Turbo Championship Edition. When Carlos, the evil Charo skeleton, kidnaps the protagonist Juan's childhood buddy slash love interest Lupita, the simple farmer sets out to rescue her. Overpowered and killed by the sharply dressed bony antagonist, Juan finds himself in the land of the dead. Here, he runs into Tostada, the luchadora who gives him a mask. This mask not only brings Juan back to life but also turns him into a strong luchador. And so, he sets out once again to save his beloved, along with the rest of the world. This one is unique by way of how it draws inspiration from Mexican culture and folklore, but that's not it. It also blends gameplay styles to deliver a hybrid cross between an action platformer and a beat-em-up, along with its 2D Metroidvania elements. The combat is great, and the combo system felt very organic through its gradual progression. I found it quite interesting how you navigate both the world of the living as well as the world of the dead. Oftentimes, this one requires you to perform actions in both worlds in quick succession in order to succeed. The Wii U edition is simply the best way to play this one, given its exhilarating extra levels and bosses. Child of Light Set in an alternate world, the fictional land of Lemuria, Child of Light follows Aurora, who wakes up in this world right after losing her life to an unfamiliar yet 
deadly ailment within this world. The Queen of the Night has stolen the sun, moon, and stars, and our pure-hearted, pink-haired protagonist must restore them in order to find her way home. While the gameplay here resembles a side-scroller, you'll also find RPG-like elements here. For instance, the game has you level up to gradually improve your character stats. In addition to that, the best of its kind, turn-based combat here does bear some resemblance to that of the Final Fantasy games. I love the character designs and this one's overall art style. It just screams elegant and pairs awfully well with the endearing dialogue. Even if you stop thinking about the combat in its presentation, I found Child of Light to be a perfectly paced affair. SteamWorld Dig Our next game is the second installment of the SteamWorld games and a sequel to Tower Defense. Here, you play as this steam-powered robot, Rusty, and coming to Tumbleton, a little western settlement upon inheriting a mine handed down by a long-lost uncle. The goal is pretty straightforward. As Rusty, you must get into the mine to extract some resources while discovering more about what lies down below. During your mining expedition at Tumbleton, you solve puzzles and clear its platform levels. The gameplay of this 2D platformer includes not only mining and investigating the mines to uncover secrets, but also fighting enemies that await you down below. I love how the premise of this one makes it so that you deconstruct the given world to give form to your platforms. The Metroidvania elements make it far too interesting to sleep on. All its styles are deeply layered to create this phenomenal game with impressive core mechanics, and it also manages to create a fresh and compelling atmosphere. The Wonderful 101 The Wonderful 101 is an action-adventure superhero game designed by Platinum Games. Partnered up and returning after the beautiful Joe games with this wonderful title, director Hideki Kamiya and producer Atsushi Inaba came up with this idea where Geth Jerk, an alien crime organization, has invaded the Earth. Rising to the threat and facing them, we have The Wonderful Ones, a band of mighty heroes that work under a special United Nations intelligence branch charged with protecting the planet. From an aerial viewpoint, you command your group of heroes and can have them change form to turn into a selection of objects, like a large fist, to fight enemies. On the Wii U, these Unite Morph abilities shine brightest, and I was really amazed by how it let me turn my heroes into various weapons by simply drawing on the gamepad. Want to turn into a gun? <laughs> Just draw an L-shape on the pad or with the right analog stick. In a positively overwhelming manner, the gameplay is chaotic and comes with a bit of a learning curve to make things challenging. In addition to the intuitive abilities, the combat system overall exhibits an impressive level of depth. NES Remix This next title is an extremely exciting one. NES Remix for the Wii U boasts a collection of 16 vintage NES classics, with 204 challenges to take on as excerpts from the original games. You'll be clearing zones while holding on to your lives, rushing through levels while keeping an eye on the clock, or using a given character ability to defeat a set number of foes. To further make things interesting, there are these remix challenges that alter the very fundamentals of, or combine, different games while incorporating the Wii U's capabilities for a fresh experience. Among the 16 available games, you'll find big-time titles like Donkey Kong, Mario, Zelda, and more. The goal with this one was to have it be as close to the vintage originals as possible. No, I believe director Koichi Hayashida said, completely authentic to its vintage roots. The result was an extremely accurate emulation of the games as they were on the NES. This collection is a delightful treasure chest of classics that keep you hooked for hours at a stretch, and the sequels even feature a more expansive game collection. Fast Racing Neo Our next Wii U title is an exclusive racer in a futuristic setting. Fast Racing Neo was the second title that Shinen Multimedia made for the Fast series, and is a sequel to Fast Racing League. It bears a little resemblance to Nintendo's futuristic racer series, the F-Zero games. The controls are pretty straightforward, and you drive these special high-speed vehicles made to rip through race maps across the galaxy. There's a special phase-shifting mechanic here, unique to the Fast Racing vehicles. This mechanic reverses the polarity of your vehicle's energy field and comes into play when you stick to the parts of the track that match your vehicle's colorfully depicted polarity. Additionally, it even lets the racers rack up boosting energy by grabbing power-ups. In Fast Racing League, these power-ups were necessary to change your vehicle's polarity. While that made League a challenging game, being able to switch polarity on your own with the push of a button made for more engaging gameplay and frustrated me a little less than League did when I played it. Driving around with friends is now a far more riveting experience that manages to leave a strong impression right from the beginning. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse In a reluctant alliance with pirate Risky Boots from the previous game Risky's Revenge, Shantae, the half-genie, returned to the screens as a human who gave up her powers and is adjusting to mundane life. When she hears cannon fire one morning, further investigation reveals that Scuttletown has a new mayor. This is none other than the wealthy Ammo Baron, who sentences Shantae to life in lockdown until he's decided what to do with her. When she returns home after taking the L, she finds her nemesis, Risky, waiting for her. Risky's crew has been turned into the pirate master's slaves, and 
she teams up with our hero to stop the dark magic user and her former captain from resurrecting themselves. With your magic powers no longer at your disposal, you take to using various pirate items like a gun, boots that let you dash into walls to break through them, a hat glider, a block-breaking scimitar, and more. In a departure from the interconnected world that was featured in the Shantae games from earlier, this one has you traveling to different islands on risky ship. Outside of the challenging but fun and varied gameplay of this exploration-based moment-to-moment platformer, I couldn't help but be amazed by its world's intriguing dungeon design and expert sprite programming. SteamWorld Heist The sequel to the earlier mentioned SteamWorld Dig, the series' third installment Heist, has you breaching, looting and shooting your way into enemy spacecraft. This time around, you control the casual pirate and smuggler Captain Piper Faraday, and are made to recruit an unconventional crew of robots before embarking on your next big space heist. Within this side-scrolling turn-based tactical shooter, you'll find a heavy emphasis on strategy and skill. Within its various procedurally generated levels, you break onto rival robot faction ships after making recruitments and control all the shots that your robots fire. Aside from character upgrades and customization, it offers a shooter that makes you think before you pull the trigger. In an era where a good chunk of the titles available focus on mining shooting, I find this to be a refreshing one. You can even use your surroundings in an effort to ricochet fire and take those hard-to-reach enemies down. As simple as it sounds, it can be quite addictive and charming to play. Runbo. This next indie platformer by 13AM was focused on multiplayer play and took the form of a racing game. Your goal is to make your way to the trophy that this one presents at the end of each level and you must get there before the rest of the competition. You compete in races with eight other players whom you can attack and defeat. Your attacks here also play a role in enhancing your movement. Consider how your attacks allow you to jump farther or how you occasionally swap positions with your opponent. For example, your platforms are all coloured and the backgrounds that come with them keep changing colours, often hiding said platforms or obstacles by camouflaging them, but the twist is that if you don't see it, you can't stand on it. There's nothing there once the colors changed. With its five different game modes, this seemingly simple platformer feels like two different games, the first of which takes you on a single-player adventure through over 140 levels, whereas the second serves as a multiplayer party brawl racer that you can enjoy with your friends. This fast-paced title gives you action-packed gameplay while challenging you with its ever-changing backgrounds. It never failed to impress me with how the addition of multiplayer changed the experience so drastically. Resident Evil Revelations After the events of Resident Evil 4, when a bioterrorist organization by the name of Veltro plots to poison a fifth of the planet's water with their own take on the T-Virus, the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, or the BSAA for short, sends their agents to the ruins of Terra Grigia City to investigate. This survivor horror title tells its story through episodes and puts the players in a series of spooky scenarios. You spend most of your time playing as Jill and complete objectives, solve puzzles and kill monsters to progress. The weapons available cover more or less all broad weapon types and can be upgraded. Given that you play as BSAA agents, you're also given equipment that lets you scan your surroundings efficiently and have a map to navigate through its episodes. Capcom is a genius when it comes to using a game's soundtrack to set atmospheric moods. I don't even want to call Revelations immersive, because I think that wouldn't do it justice. The lighting and environment designs are fine-tuned to scare, and the detailed character models go far in bringing this experience to life. The Wii U version came with high-definition graphics, support for the Miiverse, and even allowed you to play off-TV. Raid Mode is another fine minigame addition that has you clearing levels and their respective enemies to score points. Project Zero, Maiden of Black Water. Playing as one of three characters with interconnected stories at various points, this Fatal Frame game tells the story of three camera obscura users as they explore the harrowing environments of Mount Hikami. Each of our protagonists has their own motivations for looking into the supernatural ongoings in the game's world, and you play to uncover the secrets of the Black Water. Camera Obscura serves as your power, the only means to defend yourself in the Project Zero universe, and is depicted as a series of antique cameras that can be used to attack ghosts by taking their photographs. Now that I've explained Camera Obscura, you can probably guess what it means for the Wii U. Yep, you can directly capture those sharp ghost pictures using your gamepad. It doesn't take the obvious route to scare you, and instead focuses on building a compellingly haunted atmosphere. The art style borrows a lot from Japanese culture and storytelling to immerse you in its unique narrative. Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge borrows bits and pieces from classics like Contra, Metroid, and more. This side-scrolling Metroidvania platformer tells the story of a young physicist by the name of Trace Eschenbrenner, who dies due to an explosion in Mexico, only to wake up in the eerie alien landscape of Sudra. A voice calls out to Trace, 
talking to him, and our hero now sets out to explore this unique world and find out more about it. Contra influenced this title heavily. You'll find its mechanics and combat sequences to be in line with other run-and-gun titles. I was surprised time and again by how polished the entire thing looked while packing some mean gunplay. If I had to choose, I'd say I played this one for the plot. But in addition to that and the tight gameplay, I was also constantly entranced by the influence of H.R. Giger's Anomalies on its art style. Most importantly, I found this to be a challenging title that doesn't frustrate you with silly failures while still being a difficult game. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed With over 20 playable racers to pick from the various universes that Sega has created, All-Stars Racing is a kart racer that came with several improvements in comparison to the previous prequel game. This Wii U launch title marked the end of Sega's All-Star series and features these cool vehicles that serve you not only as cars but also as boats and planes. During a race, you'll reach a certain point that makes your vehicle switch styles. Performing mid-air stunts and drifting along the track's turns even rewards you by filling up your boost meter. If you're playing this one, you must be prepared for anything. You might find your surroundings changing as you make laps, completely altering your style of play. They even added a bunch of crazy weapons to attack your enemies with. My favourite was probably the Blowfish. This handsome joyride brings all the best elements from various kart racing games and appeals not only to seasoned racers but also to newcomers to the genre. Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE set in Tokyo Shibuya and Harajuku districts. Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE is about a group of teens who befriend and merge with the Mirages. Mirages are beings that feed off of humans' motivation to chase their dreams. This motivation is dubbed performer energy, and while some of the performer feeders befriend humans and protect the real world as Mirage Masters, other Mirages have malicious, ulterior motives and play a major hand in several recent missing persons cases. This RPG is a crossover of the Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei series, and you play through its various chapters as the main protagonist, Itsuki. Let's talk about the excellent battles. You attack, use items and cast spells in turns. You can even swap out the other two characters in your party of three, led by the unswappable Itsuki. This expansive battle system requires you to consider your enemy's strengths and weaknesses so that you can choose the best attack strategy at your disposal. This is one of those rare cases where the side quests are as immersive as the main story. I particularly loved how it portrays characters, even while depicting darker scenarios. If you enjoy anime, you're sure to find this one a perfectly paced game. Shantae Half Genie Hero Up next, we have Shantae Half Genie Hero, the game that followed Pirate's Curse. This one was designed specifically for HD consoles and sees the hair whip wielder carry out her crusade to protect Scuttletown from all evil. With Uncle Mimic working on a new invention to protect the town and Risky Boots plotting to steal and use that invention for her own selfish reasons, this story packs a whole lot of magic. This one has you picking up various dances, which let you turn into different animalistic forms. Each of these comes with its own abilities and plays a key role in clearing this platform former stages. Where the previous Shantae games took to a pixelated art style, Half Genie Hero boasts 2D vector character sprites within its 3D world. The animations are as smooth as ever, the world is vibrant, and it even packs a decent sense of humour. Shantae's different forms vary the action. Speaking of varied, the devs outdid themselves with this one's level design, and I'm pretty sure I'd go as far as declaring it the best looking game in the series. Art of Balance Yet another Shinen multimedia title, Art of Balance was ported over to the Wii U's roster in HD in 2013. This indie puzzle game has the player stacking blocks on top of blocks in such a manner that the tower doesn't fall. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, I might have left out the fact that you stack these blocks on top of one or more platforms floating in a container filled with water, and you lose, even if a single block falls into the water. It makes use of the gamepad or analog sticks, and lets you choose what piece to pick up. You have some freedom in how you place the block, meaning that these can be rotated at 45 degree angles. As you clear its levels, the game introduces new mechanics through various block or platform shapes, fragile blocks that can't carry a lot of weight, and more. I was extremely pleased with this one's real-time physics. There are over 200 puzzles within the game's eight worlds to unlock in arcade mode, and your goal in each level is to finish all your blocks and then have the tower stand still for at least three seconds when you're done. It's quite calming to play, really. Safe to say that the art of balance is here to stay on our marvellous list of Wii U essentials. 
Call of Duty Black Ops 2. A sequel to the best-selling Call of Duty game, Black Ops 2 was the first game of the series to make it to the Wii U. The main campaign plays as a sequel to the first game and has you taking control of Frank Woods and Alex Mason in its 1980s segments and Alex's son David Section Mason in its 2025 segments. You fight to take down arms dealer gone terrorist Raul Menendez in both time periods. To make things personal, he also kidnapped David in the 80s before proceeding to cause the Second Cold War in 2025. With over 10 featured locations, all of which look gorgeous on the Wii U, Black Ops 2 takes a non-linear approach to telling its story and can lead to multiple endings. It's a fine example of a game franchise's evolution over the years and exhibits great gameplay variety and replay value. With the various choices that it has players make and their respective outcomes, I was always awed by the nature of the plot. This story, while it takes place amid the war and also follows soldiers, has a more personal feel to it. This was not only the Wii U's first COD game, but also the first Call of Duty title that featured multiple endings. Marvelous Verdict I believe that's our time for the day, folks. As today's marvelous voyage through the many timelessly charming wonders that the discontinued console gave us draws to an end, I hope this video was able to reach those who were looking to reignite a sense of nostalgia for these titles and get our newest Marvelous members curious. These top 50 Wii U titles are a testament to the enduring magic of the 8th generation's firstborn console, which left its deep mark in the realm of gaming. As a bit of a hopeful optimist when it comes to video games, I found it to be so very painful when they discontinued this excellent excellent console over it not selling well. If you happen to be intrigued by one of the games I've mentioned, particularly its online mode, I advise you not to waste any time and play it ASAP because, eh, come early 2024, Nintendo will have shut down all online connectivity for the Wii U. From timeless classics like the NES-inspired games for the Wii U to its many hidden gems, each title we've taken a look at today reinforces the Wii U's unique charm. So, whether you're rediscovering these classics or diving into them for the first time, I hope that the adventure, innovation and ultra-level fun live on. Keep gaming, keep exploring, and as always, stay marvellous, gamers!